another episode of Running with Laz. Today I have with me Renee Harden. Um, I think I met Renee probably, I, I'm, I've known of you for, you know, at least four or five years, I think, part of the Medina County Roadrunners. Probably, Seeing yeah. all your, you know, achievements and marathon results. Well, I think one of the fastest runners in the club, I would believe. Yes, I, I think so. We have some fast runners, though, particularly some fast ultra runners. Okay. So, I mean, I, I'm probably one of them, but we've yeah. got some pretty stellar runners. So. I didn't meet you personally, though, until I think I met you at Dr. Leo's office, where we oh, actually yes. met face-to-face. We were both there yep. being treated for most likely injuries. <laughs> yes, I was, I was injured. I've been injured continuously for about a year. <laughs> so how are you feeling right now? I know that you know you have had some injuries and you know how are you how are you dealing with it? i saw that you're doing you know a lot of uh, of swimming and and stuff like that right well so about a year ago it's oh no it's more than a year ago now i uh herniated my l s1 l5 and that's lower back it's mm-hmm. right over the sacrum and um that took 5 months to really get bad i trained through it a lot and then I took May and June of 2017 mostly off. And then I started building back in. My back was better. And then I got a stress fracture, a tibial stress fracture in August, late August. And I have not run consistently since then. Wow. Yeah. So what, it was you, bad I mean, one. what do you think it is? Just, uh, you know, everybody talks about like overtraining and, and stuff like that. But, you know, I think it's just kind of like freak of nature sometimes when people get injured. No, this was not freak of nature. <laughs> I averaged 45 miles a week in July and 80 miles a week in August. So that was uh, jumped stu- up too much. Huh? Yes, you put on my part. I ne- I've never had a bone injury. So if, if you would have told me I was going to get a bone injury from doing that, I would have been like, "You're crazy. I'm not going to get a bone injury." Right. Completely <laughs> arrogant about it, and um, thought it would be fine. I did have Achilles tendonitis in both Achilles, mm. really bad in July and August. So I ran through that on. You know, Achilles tendonitis, higher mileage. It was a rough month, but I thought I was doing. I was hitting all my times. My long runs were going so well, and I was going to race Akron. And then I woke up the day after a long run, and I couldn't walk. Oh man! It was a real sudden stress fracture. Wow. So. Yeah, Achilles. You had Achilles on on both of them. Were injured. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Real tight soleus muscles. I was working with Dr. Leo on that. Um, and extending down into the Achilles, like mm-hmm. my my right, my left was much worse than my right. I was probably comp- compensating. That's right. what happens. You know, you you have something hurting. It's, you're probably not out there in your best form <laughs> as the miles go by. Yeah, but, you know, the, the scary thing with the tendonitis is it tends to, as you run a little bit, it tends to feel a little bit better. Yep. So even though, you know, you probably shouldn't be out there running, like, oh, you know, it, it's working its way out. I'm yeah. feeling okay. Yep. That's what happened to me when I had, you know, my tendonitis, but I had the, um, what's it called, insertional oh, tendonitis yes. on the left down. foot. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, and I think it caused like a bone spur on yep. the heel yeah. and it was just, it was the worst thing ever. Oh yeah. You know? People often have surgery on that. It gets oh, so bad. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I went to a number of different doctors and um, ultimately ended up going to Dr. Leo. So he mm-hmm. kind of helped me through it. And then last year, I mean, this happened like three years ago in April. Um, Last year, I ran a 5K in the Ohio City area. And, you know, for whatever, I mean, I hadn't been feeling any pain at all. Within a mile into the race, my heel just started hurting. I'm like, oh, my gosh. So I just, I stopped. I waited for my other daughter. I stopped, and and we kind of jogged it in together. And I could barely walk afterwards. But within two days, the pain was gone. Oh, so cool. I don't know if it maybe it's the because of the bone spur, it just you know hit me the wrong way. I don't know. That's it was just weird. it was scary because yeah. I thought you know I do not want to go through this again. I don't want to be no. down for like you know because I I I ran on it. You know I, I think I for four weeks maybe I didn't run, but I was doing races on it. And, mm-hmm. you know, oh yeah, so, the right. crazy stuff like every other. If runner you can does. run it, you on it you usually <laughs> right. do. But yeah, no, I mean I I'm tried to come back to running from the stress fracture and every time it's my leg it started to hurt um, within a few days of mm-hmm. trying to run and I mean I'm let's see I have two more meets left in a um, U.S. Masters swim season so yeah, yeah I'm I swimming a that. lot I train awesome. to swim and 
It's keeping me busy. I'll be back to running probably in, I would think, about three weeks. I'm starting a walking program this weekend. Mm -hmm. um, no more trying to just jump into running. I'm just going to walk for a measured distance, 20 minutes at a time, just ease into it, like ease into impact a little. I've taken the conservative route, I thought, but then it needs to be even more conservative. Right. So, yeah. So, you know, I know we kind of got off a little bit, but tell me about your background. I mean, when did you start running? And, you know, the, you're actually the – the first woman that I've interviewed because mainly oh, wow. I'm just interviewing men. So, All right. you know, um, but you know, there's so many women that are listening to the show and, and just love to get perspectives of, you know, how, you know, women train versus men and, and, you know, is it different? And then typically like to get like advice. And obviously we're, we're sitting in second soul shoe store in yes. Medina, yep. um, which is really cool. I've never done an interview inside a shoe store. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, shoes apparel advice is the slogan. So we have advice. We're not doctors. So medical right. advice, we were really careful with, but we have advice on shoes, just as much advice you could look for. So Right. I can give you some tips on that, but do you want to talk about background yeah, first? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Tell me, like, you know, when you started running, did you run in high school, college, those types of things? Okay. And, you know, obviously you've continued to run, dealing with some injuries now. But, you know, I'm, I know that you have a family, so, you know, the amount of stuff that you do, but yet, you know, having a family, that's got to be tough. Yeah, it's, it's fun, actually. I started running um, when I was 13. I was a figure skater, and I used it as weight control. And, um, he, well, you know, like running burns the calories and I, like nothing else. And so I just found it was a really good cardio to add into figure skating. And I didn't, I didn't continue figure skating for very much longer after that. I think I was 15. Well, we moved to a place where there, it just lessons were not readily mm -hmm. available. We moved to the UP of Michigan. And um, our rink in that area was seasonal only. It was, an, it was an indoor rink, but it was cooled by the winter. And so I would, I would still figure skate all winter and then be done in the summer. And so I started running more in the summer. Did my first race when I was 16, and it was a 12K trail race. Yeah, it's called the Black Bear. And I didn't know how long a 12K was. I'd been running three or four miles at a time, and mm -hmm. I thought that was long. And so I get about five miles in, and I'm like, wow, this is not good. I took my shoes so off. So like seven miles somewhere It's, it's over, there? a little over seven little, miles, yeah. yeah. Okay. I took my shoes off because they were uncomfortable, and it was in sand, and so I just finished the race barefoot, and it was a scene. <laughs> I was so <laughs> were you tired. Were at that point? Or? <laughs> oh, yeah. I was like, oh, I'm going to come back and win it next year. And I did, <laughs> oh, actually. <nice. laughs> yeah. First so I, overall or first overall female? Female, nice. yeah. That's yeah. awesome. So I got hooked by the trail racing, and I did mostly trail races. I did do one season of cross country uh, where I ran four races. I think my best was right around, it might have been high 19s, right around 20 minutes um, in cross country races up there, or trail races, really. Yeah. Um, was it 5K distance? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, 5K. And then I went to Cedarville University, they recruited me. They're, they, at the time, were an NAIA school, which is different from the NCAA, um, a little less competitive, smaller schools. And I did uh, my first season of cross country there. That was new. All of a sudden, I was in fields of hundreds of girls, oh. and I wasn't winning. Right. Like that was, that was a shock to Wake the system. Up, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I, w I had hardly lost at that point. And so that was new, but I did okay, actually, that first year. I was um, an alternate to nationals, and we won the national championship that year. Um, and then the following year, I started to kind of slide backwards time-wise. Um, I got really busy with academics, and I'm the kind of person who can only focus, at the time at least, I could only focus well on one thing at a time. And I decided it was going to be academics, and focused on that. Didn't do as well at running. In fact, I did not reach a PR in any distance until I was a junior, or yeah, a junior in college. I finally PR'd at the 3K. Um, I lettered uh, several mm -hmm. times from I say I transferred from Cedarville to Ashland in my sophomore year. I lettered at both schools a couple of seasons, so it wasn't a complete loss. But you could, right. going back and looking at it, my focus was not track or cross country it was 
academics sure. and my programs that I were in. It's I was probably in. the way it should be, I guess. You know, it's probably well, you should focus more. Maybe, unless you're going to have like a, a you know long term career with just doing right. nothing but running. Yeah, and maybe you know if I could go back, I would be better at balancing it. I mean, that's looking back at it now. Mm -hmm. um, if I had had more success my freshman year, you know, I didn't have as much success as I thought that I would have, and maybe if I'd had more success, I would have been encouraged and been like, oh, I'm going to work harder at this. But I, I definitely was, was more of a mid packer than anything and it wasn't anything stellar so was it I know you said it kind of shocked you a little bit but was it hard to deal with in a way that you know you're winning races and all of a sudden you're a middle of the packer oh, yes. and yeah. did you have like a support system like with the coach was you know the coach like saying hey don't worry about it or or, um, or they don't really you know they've got no. so many kids that they're yeah. working with I wasn't I was varsity for part of the season but I wasn't like their top five I should take that back. No, I was top five for a while, but mm -hmm. on and off, I certainly wasn't one of the All-Americans. So there was more focus on that we had, I think, four All-Americans that year mm -hmm. at Nationals my freshman year. And so there was a bigger focus on that front pack oh, sure. that we're going to – one of them could have – she came within five places of winning the National Championship. So, you know, there was some focus there. I had an assistant coach who looked out for my pack, and um, so they were great. I had no complaints, but – no, there, I think when you go to college, there's a different expectation. Oh, sure, yeah. Um, you don't expect there, for there to be mental issues around being a mid-packer all of a sudden. <laughs> so I, I don't, I wouldn't have expected them to baby me, you know, right. in that situation. So. Well, yeah. it's like, you know, any other sports. I mean, they have to, when you get to that level and they're trying to win yeah. championships and, and, you know, get kids to, you know, other levels that they've got to focus on. Yeah. You know, the fastest, not the fastest five, but probably like the fastest seven to eight, I would think, because Ten, there's going to yeah. be that, you know, that those probably from week to week, maybe vary that fifth person could be the sixth or seventh person exactly. if they have a better yeah. run or something like yeah. that. Yeah, there's certainly more I focus. never ran cross yeah. country, so I'm just like, same thing when I was interviewing Kerry Hunter yesterday. He's kind of going through all that with me. I'm like, yeah. I'm learning a lot from this yeah. stuff. This is nice. Yeah, and typically there's an assistant coach that can help the mid to back of the pack, you know. Um, watch over them more in workouts and everything and that's that is what happened the head coach mm -hmm. would focus more on the top five sure and then um the assistant coach would kind of mentor the rest and okay. she she did a great job yeah i it's like i said i have no complaints they were good coaches so when you when you left college did you continue to run how did you i mean you know obviously you i've seen you run I've, I've seen all this but or you followed you through you know the running club or whatever but you know, did you kind of stop for a while or just, just kind of kept running on through? I, Everybody seems to like stop a little bit, you know. <laughs> no, I never stopped running. I've been running for 22 years. Um, I graduated and decided I was going to run a marathon. And that was the year, let's see, it was 2006. And I, or no, it was it 2005? 2005. 2005. And I had started my new job and... I didn't train. I meant to train. I, I really meant to train, and I didn't train. So you at I least had... ran some, right? You didn't just go oh, do yeah. a marathon. <laughs> yeah, I ran five or six days a week. I ran a five-mile loop, and I would get off work and go run my five-mile loop, and then I meant to do the long runs and the workouts, and I got maybe one 12-miler in, and I think I did a 15-miler, and that was it. And that For a was marathon. yes. The wow. fifteen miler happened in August, and this marathon was in it in October. So, it was I was not trained, but you know the race didn't go too badly. I, I went out there thinking I'm going to run. I mean I know I should be able to run a three thirty, but don't worry about it. So I went and I didn't have a watch. I didn't look at the splits, and sure enough, I get to sixteen miles and I pretty much had to walk it in because mm. my, my legs were shot. Oh sure. But you know I ran a three fifty two. That's I great. Think. And, but I, I that did, was your first one. Right. I did walk I, the majority of the last 10 miles. Like I would get to an aid station. And you still ran a 352? I was on pace for probably a 320 beginning, wow. like just running my 730s, you know. Do you think it maybe started off too fast? Mm -mm. No. no. I, you, it just I ran it super it. easy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah gotcha. No, I ran. Yeah, probably I had a not really 12, easy pace 15 going. mile long run. <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah. It's all in perspective, you know. No, I just went out super easy, but I got to 60 miles. I was like, wow, this is. I'm done. My legs are jelly, and I, I, I did run some those last two miles or mm -hmm. ten miles, but it was like I would walk 
be like, okay, no, I gotta run. And then, but I could only make it a couple minutes run, and then before I had to walk again. But I made it in. I finished, nice. and which, I was happy with was that. that. That was the Columbus Marathon. Oh, okay. uh, you can look Pretty up the results. Pretty flat course, right? Yep, it was totally yeah, flat. Good. Um, 2005. Glad you didn't have any hills in that last 10 miles, right? Oh, my goodness. No, I wouldn't <laughs> have made it. Yeah, no. So then I, uh, let's see, I got married. I had three kids and just ran. I have I moved to Medina here in 2007, 2006. I, I'm a year off. Um, and then I had a two-mile loop from my house that I would do every day, mm-hmm. maybe take one day off a week. And all through my pregnancies, um, I take a few weeks after, two, a few weeks off after I have my kids, and then I go back to running my two-mile loop, and that's what I did for eight years. Mm-hmm. And then I decided I was going to train for a 10K. My mom was doing the towpath marathon, and I was going to train for the 10K. So and your mom's a runner too. Yeah, oh, yeah, nice. Yeah, all in the family. Yeah, just like my. We're all. Runners I've been too. running for a lot longer than my mom, uh, but so yes, you, know, she, 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 uh, you got her into it then, yes. right? <laughs> <laughs> right. So I, I just, I did that 10K, and I was shocked by how easy it felt to run semi-fast. Um, all of a sudden, when I started doing the training and looking at my times, I, I probably, th- all through those eight years, I would do my two miles in 16 minutes. Like, that was my 16 minutes of exercise for the day, mm-hmm. and that was my pace. And once I started training, I was like, wow, it's not that hard to, tr- I mean, I'm running sevens, and it's, I feel fine. That's that shocked me because in college I was really struggling to do runs at anything in the sevens, and then mm-hmm. I would get, okay. you know, in a race. And goodness, I like I said, I hardly PR'd as a college runner. So I don't know what had happened. Maybe my metabolism had changed. Kids are just getting older and stronger, and all of a sudden I dropped. I think. My first 5K back, I dropped in 18:45, and I was like, "What? Are you <laughs> kidding me?" And I was, I was training hard, but it wasn't anything crazy. I was doing maybe 40 miles a week, hmm. and just um, doing a little bit of speed work, nothing huge, nothing high vol- volume, and I could run in the 18s for a 5K. Hmm. So it it shocked me. I see so you have something good to tell your kids. Be like, see, after I had you, I'm running a lot faster. I was faster. faster. Yeah. I was faster, kids. <laughs> Usually, yes. I think the opposite, you know, because my I, daughter had, you know, um, Caleb, my grandson, and she's like, you know, struggling a little bit, but you know, it's it's tough after you have kids, you know. Well, yeah, time wise, I mean, my yes. but, that, that's why I mean more time wise yeah, than anything yeah, else. Yeah, you know? certainly, you got to manage your time. But Adrian was two before I started training again. Mm-hmm. So, and, and I would train when Adam was home. That was that made it easy. I would he would come home from work and I would go for a run. So it wasn't st- it was stress free. Like mm-hmm. he was home with them, so it didn't matter. Um, but yeah, so then I just started running fast. <laughs> now, do you do you do a lot of races, or do you mainly focus on the longer races, or you do a lot of five Ks? Local, and mostly local. local. I like. Hey, to so do I think the you run the here. half marathon here mm-hmm. that yep. they have what every year in May. I think it yep. is Medina Half Marathon. Yeah. I, I got to plug this. So Medina, Medina half, half Marathon is uh, May twenty sixth, and Second Soul actually has a training group for it. It is my absolute favorite race. It's so well run. Beth Bugner is the race director for mm-hmm. it. And we're one of their main sponsors. And uh, we uh, established a training group for it because we like to support the race. And it's, um, I'll just go ahead and, you want me to go ahead and give the website now? Absolutely, okay. yeah. All right, it's Second Soul Ohio. This is your interview. Do what you yes, want. Yes, <laughs> right, right. It's secondsoulohio.com. And that's backslash HMH dash training dash group or you could just go to secondsoulohio.com and click on the medina store and it'll pop up and we do um, practices three times a week and it's pretty all-inclusive training program mainly training for the half or just training in general so yeah it's real limited right now like it's just for the half Um, in coming years we may do training groups for a spring race for a fall race and you pick your race Mm mm-hmm Right now, I just wanted to, I love the nine and a half marathon, and I wanted to support it and put something out there to help it, and so that's that's why we established this. Right now, we only have, we have seven participants, so it's a pretty small group, mm-hmm. but we... Um, Do we, you think you'll pick up more as, as time we, goes by? I'm kind of hoping... I mean, we, it's only three months away, Yeah, so. I'm kind of hoping we get ten. Okay. I, I thought that would be kind of the perfect number, and then... Um, 
it's it's going to be fun when we get to race day and it's just I we're going to be have been together for 18 weeks and then it's going to all culminate in that race day and I'm And they're all about training it. for the half or they're training for the 5k too. No, I, I don't do I didn't offer well. the 5k training. I I could because that's not going to be 18 weeks. I could just be 10 weeks out. Sure. Be like, "Hey, we have a 5k plan now." Um I totally could do that. I had that thank you for that idea. Yeah. I think one year <laughs> I actually um I was the lead bike for the 5K. So, oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. That was kind okay. of fun. I mean, I've ran out here in Medina. I used to do when, back in the you know early 90s when I was running all the time, and, and I felt like relatively fast. I ran the, the Medina Twin Sizzler that they have out yeah. here. So I used to double up and do the 5K yep. and the 10K because the 5K thing started at like 745 in the yeah. morning, and then the 10K was at like 9 o'clock. So I yes. was fast enough to do it. And Roy Hager and I, you know, we were – roughly about the same speed mm-hmm. on the the 10k so we used to kind of like go back and forth and i think my fastest 10k ever was like 42 minutes which was, okay oh yeah that's pretty know. quick well and oh, that's yeah. a hilly course too goodness oh sakes. yeah out here and plus you know july 4th even at 7 45 yep. in the morning it could be 80 80 degrees in the morning exactly so. well, but you know when you're in such good shape because i was in pretty good shape then the heat doesn't seem to bother you necessarily as yeah. much the only bad thing is is i think they had just one of the one of those races i did they just repaved the road and you know asphalt yeah and it was relatively new so it was holding in the heat and yep. it was like oh my gosh why did they do this now they could have waited till after the race <laughs> yeah no, not I'm, so lucky <laughs> twin sizzler is one of my favorite races too i usually try to do that i was injured for both Medina half and the twin sizzler last year but i'm hoping that i'm back to running that race has been around at least oh what, 40, 30 years probably? i think it's it might be 40 something. Really? Wow. Yeah. It's I know when I used time. to do it as a Medina YMCA, so I don't even oh, know wow. if that still exists at this no, point. No, we do not have a yeah. YMCA. We have a rec center now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, out here, I don't think they necessarily changed the course. It's probably the same course that has been I run for the, the same. past 40 years. You yeah. know, but it's, it is, like I said, the five, doing the 5K and the 10K. And I did them relatively fast, so but now you know it's like uh, no, I'm lucky it's, if I get out and do a 5k and finish okay. under 27 minutes. You, you have know? to have yearly yearly season bests, or yeah, don't like at some point. I know this will come to me. I can't PR anymore. Then you have to have the yearly bests, mm-hmm. and that's your that's your best for that right. year. Yeah, yeah, it's funny that you mentioned that too because last year I did 50 races, and then the year before it was like 40 something, and. You know, people used to say, oh, did you PR for the race? And I'm like, oh. well, you know, I think years ago my PR was this for a 5K, so I'll never get that again. So exactly. what I say yeah. is is I PR in my age groups. Oh, yes. So, you yeah. know, from 55 to, you know, 59, this is going to be my – try to be my PR yeah. for that particular age group. Okay, so that's actually an even better way to look at it rather than yeah. year to year. Okay, so yeah. for this age group. I like, your, your, I like your idea better, though, year to yeah. year, you know. But age group to age group, I think that's right. probably a little bit better. So um, tell me – now. Did did you actually win the Medina half? No, I have not. I've been okay. second. Um, I thought I thought one year that that you actually did you you didn't you win like a half not too long ago. I've won the I tote like half first overall yes. in the entire race. Yes, oh, like over men. Yeah, I have just a fifty k. Okay, I oh, won just overall. All <laughs> right, that was actually a pretty big deal. Um, I won overall at the um, Green Monster fifty k. That's in Aurora, Ohio, and um, I, that was actually a fast time too, four seventeen, which for yeah. a fifty k that's that's moving. It's a flatter trail, fifty k. Like miles. Somewhere? It's thirty one. Thirty one. Yeah, yes. and it's it, you know it's, that the gain was only seven hundred and some feet for the entire fifty k, mm-hmm. but I mean for, Who that cares? was that was moving. I felt yeah. really good that day. That was 2016. That's awesome. August of 2016. So, but that race actually probably sabotaged my Akron Marathon race that year because it was about a month out, maybe a little less than a month, and I felt great for that 50k and I thought I recovered from it. It was a 110 mile week, and I did not. It, it took me a couple weeks for my systems to recover. Mm-hmm. But I went right back to hard training. I ended up, it probably sabotaged my marathon. So keep that in consideration. Right, right. <laughs> Don't ever, I've decided I'll never do that to, that again. But So I, do you think you'll be okay to do the half this year? I might be. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to race it whether I can, because I've been second three times, mm-hmm. twice. Are, yeah. are you going to run it to just 
to run it or are you actually going to run it I'll run it no matter what or, yeah. yeah I mean I've, I always race I never just I never just go out there and jog I always race as hard as I'm capable of um, I might not be capable of a 127 this year but I'm just going to go I'm going to race it 127 that's pretty yeah. what, what's like the overall mail time for that it's like 110 somewhere around there I, I want to say it, the course record is quite fast I want to say it's like 108 wow for that, it's a quite a that's rolling course. Fast, yeah. It's that's pretty fast, and yeah, that, I, don't, I don't think you can run out in Medina without finding hills Pharrell, unless you just do a mile. I think it's Pharrell Wyatt that has the course record. It might be a different course. Does he run it every year? Or? Mm -mm. I think it, that was just the one year that okay. he ran. Um, but there's been some fast times. There's been a 108. I know there's been a 109. Uh, I'd have to look up the results, but there's been some quicker yeah. overall wins. And <laughs> then the women, Chelsea Hall, she's run it. She's a three-time winner now. Um, and I believe she's running it again. She ran 121 last year. And on that course, that is moving. She's mm -hmm. fast. And I, I believe she's going to run it again. I, I don't want to th throw her <laughs> okay. out there, but she works at yeah. Ohio Sports. Well, you just put the pressure now. on her. Yeah. <laughs> Chelsea, you have to oh, come and does. win it four okay. times in a row. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. just interviewed Dr. Leo mm -hmm. um, yeah. about almost a month ago now. And she, I think he mentioned that he, he's just bringing you know, yes. more people on yeah, just she's because a, they're growing, expanding. Yeah, she's a PT there. So um, she's working with our Medina Half Marathon training group, and she comes on Wednesdays and does a strength training session here at the store That's for that great. training group. Yeah. I know. That's fantastic. Does she live out in this area? Yeah, she lives here in Medina. Oh, mm -hmm. cool. Cool. That, and that's, you know, that race is, is getting, it seems like bigger and bigger yes. each year. It, does it sell out? I think it sells out, right? It they has, have to it limit has, it to like certain number right. of participants. It does sell out and it has sold out. It it gets pretty close up to the race day before mm -hmm. it sells out. Um, it's not like, you know, you have to go buy your entries now because it's going to sell out in February. It's more like right. April that it sells out, but it does usually yeah. sell out because we, we just, uh, we cap it at 1500. So that's not, that's a pretty small race. Fifteen hundred total for mm -hmm. the five k two. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, just because they do get a lot of people doing that five k mm -hmm. as well. I mean, that's a great course. It's, it's a little bit challenging, but it is a great course. Yeah. It was hard for me to ride it on a bike, let alone you yeah, know, a lot of hills. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The second half of the of the half marathon is like that. Just mm -hmm. a lot of uphill. You lose a lot of elevation in the first half, and then you gain it all back plus one hundred and fifty feet in the second half. Right. Now, we have a, don't they have group runs where they actually do the half marathon course? Yes, the training runs. And they runs. get a lot of people that participate yep. in that. Yeah, the training runs happen every month. Uh, the next one is, oh, I don't want to, it's the, it's, it's Sunday, third Sunday in February. So it's a couple weeks away. And um, best thing to do is to go to the Facebook page, mm -hmm. um, the Summa Health Medina Half Marathon facebook page and then it has all the events all the information you can get everything from there and uh every month about 50 to 100 people meet on the square and run the course and not everybody runs the whole course some people run five some people run 10 and then some people finish the whole course and yeah that's a big crowd that is a big crowd. it looks like a race taking off down say, broadway yeah. yeah how do you dodge all the cars because you know they're not cutting out it's traffic it's early you know? 7 30 in the morning it's yeah, the traffic's not too bad yeah yeah i mean <laughs> that's people... a lot of people though yeah, yeah. <laughs> although your yeah, cars are probably just like honking their horn move out of the way we get off to the side i right we spread out pretty fast too because there's a lot of different paces so so how many marathons have you done five five okay Let's see let me count them hold on my first one, which I barely count, and then Erie, then Cleveland, then Akron, Akron again, and then Athens. So six. Six total, but five in recent years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what was your experience running? I mean, you, all, you felt pretty good with all the races? or no, uh, My first one Except back. Except for the first one. Yeah. Right. Well, that one. I, I barely count that one. That was I, a... 352. It was so much yeah, far, it's still it's, pretty good. It was so l much longer bef you know, before I did a second marathon. But my first one back, Erie Marathon in 2014, that I expected, I wanted to run a 312, and I thought that I could. I don't think anyone thought that I could, because I had run a, a 132 half marathon. Mm -hmm. And they're like, no, 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 you're, you're overreaching. But I, in my workouts, in my long runs, I was like, well, this, I mean, 730 pace feels so easy. I can go faster than this. And so... Erie went very well. I fell off 
the pace quite a bit in the last 10k, but I ran a 307.24, and I was like, wow, I can, I can go sub three, that no problem, this next race I'm going to go sub three, and then I had Cleveland and Akron that were just nightmares, big positive splits, and then I had Akron again, another nightmare, and finally, I didn't train for a marathon because I was injured last year. And I trained for an 8K, the one in Chicago, the mm -hmm. Shamrock 8K. Um, I was just trying to do faster intervals, get a little faster so I can run a good 8K. And I went out there with my team, um, Team Ohio, and I had a good race. I had trained well for it. And despite my back still being off, um, I ran a good time there. The next week, I ran Athens Marathon because I had signed up for it with my training buddies, and I ran a 307, so I ran a PR off of 8K training. Nice. <laughs> I, yeah, I cannot explain it. I am not a good example of marathon and training. Athens is probably a fairly hilly course, too, right? Flat. Is it's it really? It's along the river. Wow. Yep, okay. it's along the river, so it's on that bike path. Um, I can't remember the name of the bike path, but anyway, it goes right along the river, flat nice. as a pancake. Okay. The second half is pretty torturous. Um, you get your, at that pace, you're alone pretty much. Mm -hmm. And I had maybe one person I could see ahead of me, and finally had no one I could see ahead of me. And there's just a bike next to me and nothingness for the next five miles or however far I had to go. So that was the last few miles were tough, but yeah. So I have to ask you, why have you never run Boston? Um, I mean, you, obviously your yes. time is fast enough. You've qualified. Yes. Yeah. I decided every year when the registration time comes that number one I don't want to spend the money number two I don't How want to make the trip to register it's, for that it's like it's not so much or? it's not so much the registration actually I think it's under 200 is to it register. Really? Okay. yeah so that's not too bad it's more getting out there right. the lodging and not only that it happens on a weekend where I am almost certain to have a track meet so I would have to miss um, a track meet and a day of practice and I'm I'm just I, I go back and forth with mm -hmm. do I want to do I want to do the, do I want to spend the money first of all because it's a vacation you have to look at it as, yeah. as a vacation you're spending quite a bit of money and I just say no I don't want to spend the money I don't want to miss a track meet and I don't want to miss a day of practice and I won't do it and so eventually I'm gonna have to decide okay am I ever gonna do Boston <laughs> but <laughs> I think you gotta do it at least I, I have once. to do it once. I mean, right? I can't do it just because I can't qualify unless I go through a charity or something like that. But you, with your times, I mean, you already qualified. Right. Well, you know, you, would you have to requalify or just. No, I have a 2017, so that's good for two years. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. even if I don't run a marathon in the next two years. But we'll see. I, eventually, I probably will. I, I kind of want to wait for the right year for it to be a special year. Maybe when I can take my kids and have yeah. it be a family vacation because that's the other thing is I like to have I like to choose my I only get my one of my solo vacations a year I get one solo vacation a year where I go out to Colorado or I go last year I went um, and ran on a team for Great Lakes Relay uh, that's a weekend up in the UP and you're like camping and running eight hours a day it's crazy um, so I choose typical runner. Yeah. <laughs> so I a vacation to run. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I choose. I, I like to choose my vacations around running, mm -hmm. and so that's what I've done in the past. And then on top of that, we only get one family vacation, so that would be the family vacation sure. that year. So yeah. it's it's well, the, choosing. Well, I think the great thing, Bob, there's a lot. I don't know if it's going to happen this year, but I think there's at least usually three or four runners from the Medina County Road Runners Club that that does Boston. Oh, I'm sure. Yes. You know, so Every it's year. cool that everybody could probably share expenses and things like that unless yep. they make it a true, you know, true vacation. But Yes, they but, do. They actually they share um lodging, they'll get a house. Mm -hmm. It's usually what's happened in the past. So they'll share lodging. You, you, getting out there is on you usually. If the if somebody's driving it's because they're taking their family. Mm -hmm. And otherwise you're going to fly. But that's probably a good what ten twelve hour drive. Probably, it is, maybe a yeah. Little bit longer. Yeah, the families that go out, they're usually staying overnight right. somewhere on the way. Yeah, yeah, it's cool to see because I know that you know I interviewed John Pavlik before too, and 
and you know see him post pictures when they were doing the Boston Marathon. I think it was last year. So, you know, all the different bars that, that they go to and oh, you know have their beers. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's why I say you don't, you almost have to do it. But I would love to do it. But like I said, I, it's got to be through a charity. Well, yeah. No, I mean I will. I, I'm waiting for the right year. Well, I'll see. Maybe it'll be a year. I what I would love to do is go spectate. But again, like if I won't go to race, if I won't miss stuff right. to go race, then I'm certainly not going to miss stuff. You, to you're go probably like, why? Spectate. Why would I go there just to watch it when I know uh, I could be out there running? It. This year, so this year's Boston Marathon, I cannot wait to watch it. I've been looking for it's on my calendar, and I'm going to um, fire up my computer. <laughs> like I pretty, I usually watch it online, uh, and there are the top American women. We could we could go one two three. The top American women are really? so good. Yes, I can't Shalane remember when Flanagan. that's happened. No, I don't. It's been a, I don't think it's ever happened. Well, maybe before prize money. Yeah. I'm certainly not. I w- it would afterwards. have to be like, you know, 80s or early 80s early, or something like that, or maybe that. even yeah. late 70s. But Turn then it, you didn't have as many women running it as as they right, kind of started yeah. to over time. And I don't believe there there was prize money. It, certainly, there were three Americans in a row. Nowhere where there near wasn't what it is today. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, so Shalane Flanagan. Jordan Hesse and Desi Linden, they're all running. And those are all like, top marathoners, world class marathoners. And well, obviously, won the New York City marathon. Right, yeah. yeah. Obviously, we have internationals that are also world class, class, but I honestly, I think we could have an American winner of the Boston Marathon, women's. So I, I'm excited to watch that. I can't even remember the last time an American woman won the Boston Marathon. I mean, it always oh, seems like it's on spot here. Ethiopian or um, it, Kenyan. It's in the 80s. I remember when Uta Pippig won three years in a row, but yeah. she was German. No, yeah, no. Uh, so it, I, I can't remember when the last time a woman. Oh, maybe it was, what was her name, Rosie Ruel, who never even really <laughs> ran the, she uh, didn't take a bus to the finish line. <laughs> I'm going to Google it. <laughs> Let's see here. <laughs> I know it's in well, the no, 80s. No, Rosie Ruel, I think it was. She the, was the, the cheater, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's going to count. <laughs> Well, these days, I don't think that could even, you know, no way that could happen. But you never no, know. No, no, yeah, know. you miss those. T- well, there's a there's a television crew on it the whole time. Right. Yep. But so yeah, that was you know pre television crews or just television yep. crew at the finish line. That was yeah. it. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, I mean, it's not that we haven't had women up there. I mean, Desi was second. It was it 2011. I might be wrong on the year there, but she was seconds behind first. So we've had good finishes. It just hasn't quite. Right. Haven't quite had the winner. Um, well, it's so tough, you know, because I'm mean, like like you're saying when you the one marathon you did where you were kind of basically running by yourself. Oh yeah. That's you know that's difficult. I think that's why you see a lot of the the top marathoners. They always seem to be running in that pack until they get to like the last you know last five k. Then you start to see yep. it spread out a little bit yeah. because who's when they're on left? their own, yeah. yeah, who's got who's got it left? Yeah. Most of the time, it's like a Kenya's got it left. I think it's Lisa Rainsberger that was the last. What year was that? Let's see here. Um, as a, she's the last American woman to have won the Boston Marathon, yeah, and that was in, it was in the 80s, 1984. Wow. Yep. It would be awesome to see it happen again. You know, that's the great thing is because, you know, over the, it seems like the last 15 to 20 years, it's all been, you know, the Kenyans and the Ethiopians. They they yeah, have been the, the top runners. Yeah. And, you know, the Americans kind of just fell behind. And, I mean, who knows if it's training or whatever it is, but I you're mean, starting to see some of these American runners like Galen Rupp, who's, you know, doing well yeah. too. But, it's you know, been, you, just, you, you know, now Meb, Meb Kapleski won. Yeah. But he's American, but yet, you know, um, U.S. citizen. So. Right, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean – Honestly, we had a really, really bad slump, late 90s, early 2000s. I mean, we had, Amer- was it the 2000 Sydney Olympics? I think we only had two guys go in the marathon because we, they didn't have the world qualifying time. Mm-hmm. That's how bad it was. And that's not a super strict time. We, we just didn't have good marathoners. And I, it might be the training. I want to say in my own personal experience at the college level, the intervals that I was doing to run a 10K, were n- that was the standard that, at the time, and they were not good for 10K. They were short intervals. I didn't do any tempo runs. 
no long runs were encouraged, and that was kind of the philosophy, the training philosophy of the time was these short intervals. Mm -hmm. If you're fast, you're going to be able to run fast for no matter what the distance. And if that's wrong thinking, like if you're trying to run a mar if you're trying to race a marathon fast, you're going to have to be doing some hellacious three-hour runs at close to marathon pace for a good portion of them, mm -hmm. and you're not going to you're not going to succeed at, at the world level if you don't do stuff like that. And so. I mean, Kenyans and Ethiopians, all you know, East Africans, they were doing that all along. Right. They never went to any kind of short interval training. I think they just put their shoes and went out and ran well, and 25 they're also, miles. Yeah, know? they're also at 8,000 feet elevation, right. which right. doesn't So when they hurt. come here, it probably feels much easier on them. Oh, yeah. I think that's why a lot of the top runners actually go out and try to train in Colorado because, you know, the, the, um, the altitude up there, you know, six to 8,000 feet, depending on yeah. where you are. You got to go out in the middle of nowhere to get to eight in Colorado mm -hmm. um, for, for good training surfaces. So Boulder, you know, is, is about 50, mm -hmm. 5,600 feet. So uh, you honestly have seen more altitude camps happening higher, like Mammoth Lakes, Flagstaff. With, that's 8,000 feet, seven mm -hmm. to 8,000 feet, which that is a significant jump from 5,000. 5,000, you're going to get some benefits, but, man, 8,000 feet is – you can barely breathe walking around, you know, and then they're doing their long runs up there um, at very strict paces. So I think in the last 10 years, Americans have gotten a lot better. In fact, the 2016 Olympics, we had multiple distance medalists, not just top 10, not just making it to the finals. We had medalists. And um, – a gold medal in the 1500, you know, Matt Centrowitz. Mm -hmm. So that's that's pretty cool to see. Like, there's a real resurgence happening. But also it may be because of those altitude camps sure. happening really high. I mean, 8,000 feet. So. Yeah, I went out to uh, for work to Vail, Colorado, um, August of um, a year ago now. And I went out there, you know, tried to run or whatever. And, and it was it was okay. I mean, I only ran like two or three miles. Mm -hmm. I didn't really feel a significant difference. The thing that always kind of surprised me is when I went to the different stores. You know, it was middle of summer or August, but it was still cooler there. Yes. Um, every store you went to, they had this can of oxygen. Yeah. The, you know, little can of oxygen you just put in your mouth and you take your shot or whatever. I'm like, well, why do people need that? And they're like, well, because the mountain bikers go up there, so they take, you know, yeah. the can of oxygen with them. If they feel short of breath, they, you know, take a shot right. of oxygen. Yeah. I'm like, wow, the, okay. The I real... never of that. The real struggle doesn't happen, I would say, for me anyway, until eleven or 12,000 feet. And then um, fast hiking is pretty hard. Mm -hmm. 8,000 feet, I did a workout at 8,000 feet, and it was hard. I certainly wasn't going as fast as I right. would on at sea level, but I got through it. I could run and everything. And then I was up at 11,000 feet, and I, if I had tried to – running uphill was not happening. I had to hike. Um, if I had tried to run, it would have been at least a minute slower mm -hmm. at the same effort. Like just, And I noticed, too, I would just suddenly have to stop going up a hill and trying to run up a hill. Sure. Like I would get to hyperventilating so badly that I was like stopping my tracks. So you didn't have your little can of oxygen with you? I did not you, have right? oxygen with me. <laughs> no. I, you know, I, I wonder, because you pick up the can and it's like, it's light. It feels like there's nothing oh, in it. Yeah, so I no. wonder if they're just like, you know, it's a marketing ploy. There really is no not. oxygen in there. <laughs> I hope not because somebody might need them at, you know, 14. Right. Or might actually need oxygen at 14,000 feet. <laughs> Sorry. It, just, it knocked off a little bit there. Your mic. You're good. You're good. So um, now you work here and you're also a coach. Yes. Um, do you do track and cross country? Yes. So how do you how do you manage all that? Uh, and I know seasons are different or right, whatever, but yeah. you're probably getting into you know track season here yes. pretty soon mm -hmm. for training. Yes. You, know, you you don't have to hold it. You're good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we are doing conditioning right now, so I'll go to practice today. Um, right right now during the month of February, we practice uh, we condition Monday through Thursday. And You're Buckeye? Buckeye? Yes, at Buckeye. I'm, I'm the head coach of cross country and I'm assistant coach um, for track. I coach both distance and sprints in track. And so then March season will start and I'll be there five days a week. And then late March we'll start meets. So then at, that's six days a week. Mm -hmm. uh, every day I have a plan. Like there's probably every hour of the day is something that I have to do. 
and I start the day knowing that, and I go through the day, and everything gets done, hopefully, <laughs> and then I end my day and go to bed. That's how it happens. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so where do you get at Buckeye? Where do you guys run? Do you run? Because, I mean, there's like some 252, I think, is right there. And yes. there's a lot of cars that, you know, I, I don't know if they change the speed limit, but I think it's 55 through there. So do right. you guys run out on the road there? We do not. That was banned before I started working there. Okay. And we during cross-country season, we run on the course. And during track season, we run either on the track, obviously not right now, it's snow covered, but they'll run on the campus. And mm -hmm. there's a mile and a half loop, and then they run it over and over again. So it's not ideal training situation right. for distance runners. Uh, I think that's why the program has not grown as fast as other mm -hmm. sports, just because we just don't have great training available. But here's the thing, in the summer for cross country, we do not meet at the school we, we meet at the school maybe once or twice a week. And the other day, days we meet Huffman Park, Reagan Park, Buckeye Woods, Peninsula. That's a nice place, Buckeye Woods. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys so, ever go down to Hinkley at all? Uh, That's probably a little bit further Hinkley, over. yes, once yeah. a week as well. Hinkley, okay. Buckeye Woods, Huffman, Reagan, or Peninsula. Peninsula, is we're going to morning practices this year. So that will be like a rare. We'll go maybe twice. Now, for um, for high school, is is it considered voluntary? Conditioning is, yeah. yes. Okay. Preseason training. But you get yes. everybody, don't you? Pretty much. No, I do. No, I don't, don't get everyone. <laughs> I get the people that are committed. <laughs> yes. Gotcha. I was going to say, I think high schools have to be like that where they can't make it like, you know, mandatory. You can't. To, you no, know. no, you can't. Preseason can't be mandatory. Um, once the season starts, then it's mandatory. Now, yeah. do most of your runners, um, you know, how big of the team do you have? Do you coach boys and girls? I do coach boys and girls as, until it grows. I'll continue doing that. Right now, I had, let's see, for cross country 2017, I had 40 total. That's great. 38. 38 total. I had a couple injuries mm -hmm. that dropped off. But I started with 40, and then I ended up with 38 athletes. And then for track, well, with the sprinters now, I may have 60. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's How long have you been coaching? This will be my fourth year. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So really, you kind of. You know, people that came in as freshmen are now your I know. seniors. Yeah, it's going to be you know? a sad yeah, season. Yeah, so you kind of started yeah. with them and you just kind of like graduated up through that as well. Yep. That's kind of cool, though. Have you seen a lot of them, ad, ad, you know, advance? Yes. You know, I, I yeah. asked kind of, you know, Carrie Hunter the same question. It's like, uh -huh. you know, do you see your these runners that come in in ninth grade and are like, you know, I think that kid's going to be pretty good. Yes. Like, yeah, no, I had. Um, as long as they focus. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. They have to stay dedicated. But, you know, I have kids that were freshmen. And I can't believe how fast they are now. So that does happen. Right. You've got to tell them, stay the course. You know, you got to keep working hard. You now don't do know you, what you can do your senior year. Now, do you guys mainly run, like, invitationals? So the high school level will have Wednesday meets. We call them Wednesday meets. Mm -hmm. And they're um, interconference meets. So they're okay. either a tri or a dual meet. And we're just against our conference schools. And those are for the entire team. Is we Brunswick can, in your conference? Not yet. No? Okay. Uh, we just went Division One, and unless something gets restructured, we'll stay Division One. I. I think that we'll be in the small suburban league. I, don't quote me on that. I, mm -hmm. I know this is a, this is public, but that's the rumor: is that if we stay Division One, we'll be in the small suburban league. But we don't know that yet. We sure. haven't been assigned a conference. Um, we'll see. <laughs> Do you, I mean, I'm assuming you you enjoy it. Now, Carrie's been doing it for 30 years, mm -hmm. so, you know, you could potentially be doing it for, you know, a total of 30 years as oh, well. Oh, I would love that, yes. Yeah. So I actually I enjoy it so much that I decided uh, I won't be using my journalism degree ever again, yeah. <laughs> thankfully, because I – Yeah, you never know. You know. Start doing a blog or I something could, like right. that. Yes, I, I'm sure I could integrate it somehow. But I would like to be a coach as a career, and right now um, – with my kids young, I probably can't have a full-time career, mm -hmm. um, but I am working my way towards full USATF certification. I have level one right now. I'd like to go for level two this summer. That's in Indianapolis. And then level three has what to happen. What is it, UC? USATF. Oh, it's what the is go that? governing body oh, okay. for track gotcha. and field, right. USA track and field. And eventually I'd like to get to level three, which is the top level. And that's, um, as far as mm, qualification, it's national world-class level coach. That doesn't mean I'm going to be coaching world-class. I just want all the information that I can right. get before I 
try to go like, to full-time coaching. Mm-hmm. Um, my goal is to stay with Buckeye for 10 years. That's when I started coaching there. I said, I'd like to commit 10 years. This is a program that can be built. Um, it can get better. And I'd like to be part of that. So we'll see where that goes, but I'm four years. This right. will be my fourth year. So, well, it's nice to see too. And I don't know if it's kind of grown over the years, but you know, as you know, into your fourth year now hopefully you know you'll see more and more kids start to participate you know yes. because running is just i don't know it it, it when all these races that you know i do there's always seems like there's just a ton of people that come oh, to yeah. these races and yeah you know you have young kids up to you know 80 year old people doing these races so it's just like a such a varying degree of of people but that's why i think i do so many races because i love the the atmosphere of being around all the people that are doing the same thing. Exactly. You know, obviously you have your fastest runners, you have your middle packers, but mm-hmm. and I'm a middle of the packer, so usually when I finish, I like to just wait there and just cheer up the rest of the people on yep. because that's when it kind of starts to thin out a little bit. And you know, yeah. you got you got to have a first place person, you got to have a last place yep. person. You yep. know, that last place person should be cheered on just like anybody else. Of course. Oh yeah, no, it's a universal sport. I love that about it. Um, track is probably less universal than cross country i mean you really divide it out because the invitationals you only take your top two Mm -hmm. uh, per event or the top relay team so it's not yeah track is probably a little bit more exclusive than cross country cross country has that all the way it has that road racing atmosphere of you're not cutting anyone off the team everyone gets to finish there's a kind of a there's a loose you know time standard Mm -hmm. that they would like you to finish in but Everybody's super encouraging. The whole team gets to race every weekend. So, and it, is yeah. it all chip time now? It is. Yeah, yeah. you got to chip either in your bib or on your shoe. Nice. So everybody knows their time. Do they have like a big board up there that kind of like no, as, I, they cro- yeah. up, as they cross? It kind of shows. Oh, sometimes some the yeah. larger I guess it meets. Depends on the, yeah, yeah the depending on what meet. timing they right. hire. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Now we're we're in a shoe store. So, yes. <laughs> you know this is what you do. I've yes. actually called you know messaged you before on shoe advice. Yep. Because you know I was running in the the um, uh, the Hoka. I think it was the Clifton. Oh yeah. And you know it just seemed like it didn't last. Yeah. I mean, great shoe. I thought it w- it really helped me with my Achilles injury, but it just didn't seem like it lasted at all and i have to run in a very flexible neutral shoe yep or else it just puts too much stress on my tendons it seems like but tell me about you know any new shoes coming okay, out i mean yes. what do you what do you kind of suggest for people okay so i have this the kind of the cool new shoe that i'm excited about i have not bought it yet well i'm not i'm not quite back to running is the well, Nike should let you try it for free well <laughs> yeah no no i don't think this one's going to come for free <laughs> the nike zoom fly we just ha- got that in this store. Uh, we've had it in our other stores for a while. It's a very, you know what? This new technology that Nike is using in their shoes. At first, I was very skeptical. Anytime I hear about a benefit, like a performance benefit from a shoe, I'm like, whatever. You, what? you know, it's the right. person running that's, ploy. that's getting the results, team. okay? <laughs> yes, I always think it's a marketing ploy. But then I tried on the Nike 4%. I, I do not own that shoe. I'm not, I haven't, haven't bought it. But I tried it on, and I was like, I'm in alien shoes. This is, I'm, there's no other explanation. That carbon fiber plate that you hear about that provides this um, bounce, mm-hmm. it really does. Like when you take a stride, it bounces you up off the ground. It's amazing. And so the Zoom Fly is like a toned down version of the, four per, the Vaporfly 4%. And it gives you that same feeling. The nice thing about the Zoom Fly is going to be it's not going to wear out as fast. So that's a good shoe to look out for. With the carbon fiber, are they pretty flexible? Yes. Yeah, the 4% 4 are very flexible, yes. But they're um, really a racing flat. So what I've gathered from it and, you know, People can use it for whatever they want. It's really just you save it for racing or else it's going to wear out so fast and it's $270. And whereas the, um, the Zoom Fly is um, one, 160 so it's a, quite a bit less expensive. It's mm-hmm. a high cushion shoe, high cushion shoe price. And so that's an exciting new shoe. Uh, the other shoe that I think has had a really good update is the New Balance 1080. It's a high cushion shoe as well, mm-hmm. neutral. I should give the category, shouldn't I? <laughs> 
Um, but they updated it really well. It's much, it's, I, it used to be kind of clunky and very wide, and uh, it's not anymore. It's a pretty sleek shoe, very light. Um, it's good for people who like firm cushioning, uh, and, and it's not super flexible. It's mm -hmm. a little stiffer, a little firmer. Um, let me think. So when you race, do you always race in the flats? Yes. It doesn't matter the distance, whether I, it's a half marathon. I or... would prefer to train in flats, but I wear them out too fast. Okay. Um, my favorite shoe of all time was the Saucony Verada. They discontinued that, and I could not find a shoe to replace it. And finally, I found the New Balance 1400s, and they're um, very minimal. It's about as minimal as a shoe can get. Um, not like a spike, but, mm -hmm. you know, real light on the cushioning, very flexible. I think they're the most comfortable shoe, and I don't, don't plan on changing from those um, as far as racing. And um, Until they change the model or come out with something different. Well, right? the Adidas Sub 2 is coming out, so that's their answer to the Nike 4% the four percent shoe. And I, I'm curious to try that. I think that's probably going to be a pretty good shoe. I used to run in the Bostons, the mm -hmm. uh, Adidas Bostons. And I ended up having issues with the forefoot wearing down really fast because I'm a pretty heavy forefoot striker. And um, probably 100 miles in, I would wear that forefoot down so that I felt like there was no cushioning in it. Mm. So that um, I switched from the Boston to the 1400, New Balance 1400. And if anybody's looking for a racing flat, I suggest you at least try the New Balance 1400. And if you need stability, they have a 1500 with a little posting in it. Sure. So. And you got to come here a second soul to get it. Oh right? yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you want, if you want the best advice, come to Second Soul. Yeah, all well, the running absolutely. stars have the same shoes, right? But we have the good and, advice. You know, don't, and I, you know, I don't want to like. You got the stores and the malls and stuff like that that really. Oh right. You know, yeah. they're just trying to sell you a shoe. At least I yeah. think. I mean, I, I don't, I don't say anything negative about them or whatever. But you got to come to, you know, a store that you know has people that hopefully run kind yes. of experience the same thing that, yes. that you do and, you know, can give you good advice right. on shoes. Cause I think when I started having those Achilles issues, I probably went through five, six, seven pairs of shoes yep. to try to find the one that just kind of, you know, didn't aggravate it. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And I actually went cause uh, I went to a, a sports therapist. I think it was at the Cleveland clinic at mm -hmm. the time, physical therapist. They had me do the treadmill run, you know, looking at the gate and everything like that. And they said all that was pretty good, but, you know, I think I was just running in, in um, too stiff of a shoe. No flexibility. Yep. And it was just – and I knew I kind of did the same thing. I ran and um, I was typically running around 50 miles a month, and I went from 50 to 120 Yes. In one month, oh. and I ran Effie out there in Hinkley oh, man. a couple of times, and then right at that point, I started feeling this stuff in my, you know, back of my heel, and I'm like, uh oh, yeah. you know, this isn't good. That'll do it. That'll <laughs> that do will it. do it. Yeah. <laughs> so, what do you do with nutrition? I mean, is is your nutrition good? Or oh, I have to be honest, don't I? You yeah. don't have to be, but <laughs> I would prefer that you are. <laughs> yes. No, my nutrition is not great. I. I'm not. I, I probably know that because I yeah. see some of the things that you post yeah. on Facebook, and I'm like, how is she eating that stuff, and oh. yet she does all this running? Right. Yeah, so I, it is a work in progress, my nutrition. <laughs> I have, my whole life, I I like to cook, and I grew up on a farm where we had a lot of good food, and certainly no, um, no attention to... What's the best for an athletic performance? Actually, I should take that back. You're working pretty hard on a farm. Um, we had good food. My mom was a Whole Foods fanatic. We grew everything. We grew right down to the grain for the bread. We mm -hmm. grind our flour and make bread. And so, uh, but it was all very hearty and big attention on taste and what tastes good. And so my whole family is like that. My sisters own farms as well and farm shares, and they're best way to put this they're they're foodies they're gourmet foodies and we're all like that like we want stuff to taste good and look good and that's what matters not right. what the nutritional value is <laughs> so <laughs> well you can go to fast food restaurants get food that looks good <laughs> well <laughs> but, but like you really said the nutritional good, value right? <laughs> yeah yeah oh no i'm not really into fast food i'm into um 
probably, uh, yeah, gourmet food is what I like. And it's usually high fat, high salt, high sugar. And that's, yeah, that's the way it is. <laughs> but I have tried to work on that. I knew, I knew that trying to heal this leg uh, probably had something to do with vitamin D and um, iron and proper amounts of calcium. And so I tried focusing on that, not just with supplements, because supplements, for some reason, I don't absorb them well. I probably don't have the right combination. I'm not working with a nutritionist. Mm -hmm. uh, so I tried to start eating the foods that I needed to satisfy that nutrition. And it does make me feel better, I've noticed. I and mean, if I really focus on it, my problem is I have a lot of other things in the day to focus on. And if I've cooked, let's say, a pot roast the night before and I don't have any vegetables left, I might just get a pot roast sandwich for lunch mm -hmm. and maybe a carrot stick. So then I've got a whole meal without vegetables and very little nutritional value besides protein mm -hmm. and carbs, you know. So that's my struggle is that I get busy and I can't take the time to prepare the foods that oh, sure. I need to. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you wonder how people really are able to balance that, you know. I don't know. I don't yeah. know how people do it. Yeah. Well, it seems like a lot of them don't have don't have kids. I hate to say that, but you know, they you know, it seems like they they don't because that's that's a struggle. But yeah, maybe that I never I never thought of it that way cuz I have to cook well for my kids. You know, I like I try to make balanced meals for them. It's more like during the cuz that meal at night, I'm cooking I'm home and I'm cooking a whole meal mm -hmm. with all of the parts to it. It's more during, it's more like at lunchtime right. okay. or breakfast when I'm rushing out the door and I have time for like a spoonful of yogurt, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and then at, I get to lunchtime, I'm like, crap, what am I eating? I, I'm just going to throw what sounds good and that's usually grilled cheese, very, you know, no vegetables, certainly no vegetables. I will never choose to eat vegetables for lunch, but if I can force myself, I do. <laughs> yeah. Now, do you do you think your kids will run as well? Yes, they are runners. Oh, Actually, nice. all of them awesome. are already runners. Yes, um, Danielle is participating in the. She's my stepdaughter. She's sixteen, and she's participating in the Medina Half Marathon training group. Mm -hmm. She's may not do the half marathon. She didn't register for the half marathon part. She just met, registered for the for the training, which you can do that by the way if you just want to pay forty nine dollars for the training. Um, she's at least going to do the five k, and then. My daughter Calista is 10, and uh, she does running club at school, at her elementary school. And then her, Andrea, and Adrian, and Andrea and Adrian are seven and five. They all participate in Healthy Kids Running Series, mm -hmm. which happens in Medina. We have, we have a Medina Healthy Kids Running Series, and they um, that's fall and spring. What is that Healthy Running Series? Healthy Kids Running Series yeah. is it's sponsored by University Hospitals, and it's a nation. Here in Ohio, it's University Hospitals. It's a nationwide program where you register your kids for $25 for five races. So it's very inexpensive, uh, probably because it has such a good sponsor. And then you go and you do races every Sunday, mm -hmm. and it's age group. So um, Adrian is in the kindergarten, first grade age group. And they have their own distance. He has a quarter mile. Andrea has a half a mile, and, and Callista has a one mile, and that's the races. So they've done that. This is they'll be their third season. That's awesome. Where, yeah. where are the races at? Right. Um, uh, we were up in Westlake in the park up there for the first season. The second season is at um, Ella Canavan Elementary. Yeah, if I've got that right. It's up at the park up there on 3. Okay. There's like a park right off of this elementary school. I believe that's the right one. Anyway, it's perfect. It's really cool. It's yeah. all grass, um, lime, crushed limestone path, so mostly cross country. It's mm -hmm. the best way to describe it, and yeah, just really good for the kids. Yeah. I, the kids love it, and yeah, my kids, they're runners. I call right. them runners. Yeah. Nice. Well, you know, when when I started running back in the early '90s. As soon as my daughters got old enough, you know, we were doing. They didn't have a lot of runs back then for kids, so it was like, 
you know, one of the races I used to do was the Cats in the Flats road race up in Cleveland by St. Ignatius, and you would finish on the track. Yep. So they got to do, you know, the older kids got to do, it was more of the one mile or the uh, yep. one loop, so, you know, 400 meters or whatever. Yep. And then the younger kids just did the 100 meter run. Yeah. And Sam, um, you know, Shannon would do the four, you know, 400. And she, you know, abs they absolutely loved it. And, you know, Sam, my youngest, the first time she did it, she ran the 100 meters, and she was probably, oh, my gosh, I would think maybe four or five oh, years old. so cute. And she's running, yeah. and she's looking at the people up in the stands, just waving at them like this. <laughs> I'm like, you know, awesome. she ended up being first, at, you know, in the, but it was just, it's such a, it's such a great experience yeah. to, you know, see these kids run. The only thing I, you know, advice I could give to these kids is when you're doing these 5K runs, just don't start out like just, oh, you know, because yep. they all start out and they run as yes. fast as they can. And then like within a half mile, they're like, oh, my gosh, what did yes. I just do? I got another two and a half miles to go. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. So the Healthy Kids Running Series Medina has a pacer, an official pacer. Last year it was Nathan. Uh, he's a Medina high school uh, cross country runner. And he paced them to the perfect pace. So they didn't go out fast. Not once did any of them go out fast. That and I thought that was a huge improvement mm -hmm. over the Westlake series, where kids were just they just went out on their own. Um, he, like he's teaching them pacing strategy. Oh, it helped good. my kids a lot, anyway. Yeah. They for not go, they're not not sprinting out. Well, I think at any age you can use a pacing strategy, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> most most oh, people. Oh yeah. Yep. Um, anything else you want to add? I think it's been a you know it's been a little bit over an hour, and I know the store is getting ready to open up here. Oh yes, but yeah. No, I. I think it's been a pleasure. Covered talking a lot to you. of stuff. Yeah, yeah, thank you for interviewing yeah. me. I think we've hour goes by pretty quick, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, I know. That's crazy. <laughs> I can't believe I can talk about myself for an hour. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, that's <laughs> that's crazy. Well, I, you know, I hope that that you you know, are well enough to do the the half marathon. Yes, it would be great yeah, to I would great love to, to see you out there. I don't know if I have a race on that day. I'm doing the Hermes Challenge series oh, again. Right. It's yep. 19 races, and you know, I'm definitely going to focus on doing. Not as many races because at the end of last year, I just I struggled to yeah. do even finish a 5K. I was just like so tired. Yeah, um, burned out. No, yeah. I, my goal this year is to not get injured. So uh, I'm not going to focus on times. I'm not going to have time goals, and that's hard for me. I, I always I always want time goals. I, I will always go and race hard, but if I'm not capable of training hard, I probably won't race as Fast. Now, do you wear a watch so, too, or no? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, you do. Garmin okay. two twenty. I have an old school. It's a, it's a few. But no years headphones old. or anything, right? No oh, music. Oh no, no music. Yeah. Nope. Um, all yeah, that's called an all natural runner. Is if you don't wear, don't use any music. I've never worn music on a run. I don't even know what it's like. It seems like it would be annoying. So. You know, it, I think it, it, it's weird because I'll, I'll go and just watch races, and I'll see a lot of the lead runners come through, and they're not wearing headphones. You know, most no. of them are just running and they got their mm -hmm. watch or whatever but that's all they're doing yeah. it's you know, start to get to the back middle of packers or whatever they got their headphones in and you know i i do mine i wear mine but i don't wear headphones i have like a jacket and i just put my phone in there and it's i'm on my playlist so i can hear it as i'm running the thing is is you know when you're running a 5k or you know and you're running hard you're not really hearing the music anyways. No, it is you're so hurting too bad. Right, yeah. right. You're just you're yes. not focusing on listening. Oh, hey, that's no. a good song. You know? Yeah, so certain races, depending on the rules of the race, won't allow you to collect prize money or overall prizes if you have. Oh, really? So headphones are considered an, a potential outside uh, support, um, outside of oh, what the race provides. And so you can't have that and win prize money. And a lot, it, it varies from race to race. They're going to set out their own rules. Um, and then there's an official USATF rule on it. So in na in national championships, obviously, no none right. of the pros are going to be wearing headphones. Uh, I, most people don't run in national championships. You know, the local road races will have their own rules, mm -hmm. and some of them have none, and you, it's fine to wear headphones. But probably uh, local runners who are kind of conditioned to that, like there might be a rule, and maybe they know it, maybe they don't, but they're not going to risk it, so they don't wear the right. headphones. Yeah. I guess that's why you never see the lead runners at Boston right. or any of the oh, other no, way, no, races that, with headphones. There's for sure a rule there, yes, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Getting instruction from their coaches or something Who like knows? that. Who right, knows, yeah. Right. 
<laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Thank and, you. you know, like I said, I, I'm, oh, good luck on the uh, swim meet too, right? Oh, yes. I have one next month. Nice. Yeah. You've been yeah. doing pretty good at that, right? I, I'm a mid-packer, but, you know, I'm nice. trying to move up to the top third. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's right. the goal. Yeah. Were you a swimmer before or did you just kind yes. of pick it up? Yeah, open water. I, I had Before this, I had never done – I was on a club team at college, mm -hmm. but I would go to the practice and – goof around and not really take it seriously at open water i did a couple races when i was a kid well there were no pools in the up anyway um or if they are they're in a hotel and they're not olympic sized mm -hmm. so we swam outside in the summer and i did an open water race um, what was the I distance was super young i think it was a quarter of a mile okay so it's very short and i have you done triathlons at all i have not no, no. maybe my first will happen this year nice. do you we'll bike see. at all i am forced to bike right yeah. now <laughs> That's, yes. all right. That's all right. I don't particularly enjoy it, so we'll see about that. Right. Well, yeah. you could, you know, there's some real short distances up in Bay Village. They have a triathlon up there, which is the like sprint. Yeah, yeah that's probably it's not a quarter mile swim, yeah. ten mile bike, and five k. That's probably not worth entering. Yeah, because I swim miles. Oh. Uh, so. Well, a quarter mile should be easy then yeah, for I know, you. No, right? <laughs> it, it's almost like why? Why would yeah? Right. I it's would open water do, swim too, yeah. so it's up in Lake Erie. Yeah, I would probably yeah. do an Olympic distance. Oh, good. So because yeah, the prices they have one aren't down that downtown much. Cleveland, they do the right, Olympic yeah. or sprint distance or whatever it's called. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, the Olympic distance is like what? What? Point nine mile swim mm -hmm. and yeah, fifteen hundred usually. Twenty some mile is. bike and yep. then a ten k run. Mm -hmm. okay. But see, the prices are probably so close between the sprint and the Olympic. Like right. To the Olympics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might as well. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank um, you so yeah, much. Well, I'll be keeping uh, keeping track of you. Uh, this is Laz Jacob with another episode of Running with Laz. Take care. Have a great day.